Good morning, dear students. Today we will begin with the new lesson from our history portion, lesson number four, history and Indian arts. In the previous lesson, we learnt about applied history and its applications to common people. Let's talk about Indian arts and its history. I hope all of you will have your textbooks open, page number twenty-two. Let's get started. Now we are talking about Indian arts. Let's find out what exactly art is. It is a natural human instinct to want to share his experiences, wisdom, and also emotions. When that instinct results in a beautiful creation, it is acknowledged as art. So when man, obviously, it's a natural instinct. It's a natural. behavior of man to express his views his emotions experiences and when that uh, expression turns into something beautiful okay that is considered to be art the artist's power of imagination sensibility state of emotion and his skills are the crucial factors at the root of artistic creation when you talk about an artist you notice artists are very emotional people they always want to do things differently they see things differently and that makes them different from people who are not artists all right and therefore their imagination the way that they look at things the way that they try and express themselves makes them different so that they can create this beautiful expression of theirs known as art visual arts and performing arts the names itself tell you that there are two different kinds of arts visual is something that you can see okay only seeing and performing is where you do it like you have dancing you have singing all right you're performing it artistic creations are of two types visual arts and performing arts the sanskrit term for the first type is drik kala and for the second type lalit or angik kala okay so drik kala means visual arts where you can see some you can see it whereas when you talk about lalit or angik kala is where you showcase your skills your talents your fine arts okay many examples of prehistoric rock art have been discovered at many sites in the world it proves that the origin of visual arts is as old as the stone age man so we see that this type of art visual art all right has been in existence right from the beginning of the life of man on earth from the stone age time we see a lot of their drawings on cave walls cave paintings which tells us that they try to express themselves through their paintings all right and that is our visual arts folk arts and classical arts there are two distinct traditions of art folk art and classical art folk art is a tradition that has continued from the prehistoric times what do you mean by folk folk is nothing but people all right so you have folk art art that has come from the people from the ancient times the expression of folk art is a natural part of people's way of living and what do these people want to express their lives their lives as common people all right they would want to express themselves and that expression together has been known as folk art hence its expression is spontaneous what do you mean by spontaneous something that is done at the spur of the moment without any training without thinking all right something that comes out naturally folk art is created by collective participation of the members of a social group i told you that the word folk itself tells you that there is a number of people that are participating classical art on the other hand is expressed within an established frame of consistent rules that means if you want to learn classical art it has to be under certain rules that you need to follow so as to be perfect in that art 
okay in that classical art therefore you need to undergo certain training like for example when you talk about someone as a classical dancer or a classical singer okay you have to go to a person who is an expert and learn from them so you have to be trained it needs a prolonged training to master any form of classical art let's move on to style in art artists tend to have their own method of working it is known as the style of the artist okay so when you're talking about an artist the way that that person works okay or the method that they use is known as the style of the artist when a style is adopted by many artists over a prolonged period of time it may become a tradition so when an artist becomes famous for his work more people want to be like that artist and therefore might copy the work of that artist and over time when it is being copied over and over again it becomes a sort of tradition all right such traditions get established as an art style and therefore when people keep repeating that style over and over again it becomes a sort of tradition which later on becomes a style of presenting that art which are characteristic of a certain period or region such styles are helpful in studying art history so because a lot of artists follow a particular method or follow a particular tradition or follow a particular style in art okay it becomes easier for people especially now students of history or historians okay to research more and more about it and to know how it all began who were the followers who made it prominent all this becomes very helpful now there's a small box given to you in your textbooks the maratha style of painting maratha paintings is an example of art style the style known as maratha paintings began to develop in the latter half of the 17th century latter in the later half this style consists of colored paintings and they occur as murals and also miniatures used in manuscripts what are murals murals are drawings that are done directly on walls on ceilings okay and miniatures are the word itself tells you small paintings that are done in manuscripts what are manuscripts manuscripts are nothing but books that are handwritten okay there is no xeroxing there is no printing out where everything is done by hand now these murals of maratha style can be seen in the old wadas at places like vai minavali and satara in maharashtra the maratha style was influenced by the rajput and european styles of painting painting styles help us in understanding various things about the times in which it was developed such as the lifestyle attires customs etc so through these paintings we learn a lot about the lifestyle of the people during that period we come to indian traditions of visual arts the first type of art we are going to learn about is drik kala the art of painting and sculpting are visual arts why visual because you can see them all right so painting and sculpting first one art of painting paintings are two dimensional we all are aware of this for example sketches or paintings of nature objects and individuals they are done on various surfaces such as rocks walls papers canvas of different types and earthen pots so when man wants to express himself or wants to show his exp share his experiences okay he has to use some sort of a medium in order to portray that uh, expression and therefore he does it on various surfaces you have rock paintings you have wall paintings you have paintings done on earthen pots okay so using various kinds of things man would portray his paintings the mural of bodhi sattva at ajanta caves is one of the finest examples of the art of painting the bodhi sattva is about buddha and how he uh, gained enlightenment okay so the time that he did the 
beautiful mural that is there again mural is a painting that's done on the walls okay it is a beautiful example of the art of painting in those days next folk styles of paintings rock paintings dating to stone ages have been discovered in many countries in india there are rock paintings rock painting sites in the states of madhya pradesh uttar pradesh bihar uttarakhand karnataka andhra pradesh and telangana the rock paintings in the caves at bimbetka are famous bimbetka is now a world heritage site okay so you get to see a lot of these rock paintings that are um, you know done by man and they are found all over india in all these various states okay so we should be proud that the one that is a world heritage site we've spoken about world heritage sites in the previous lesson all right so the paintings are so beautiful that they have been considered as a world heritage site rock paintings usually depict human animal and geometric figures so if you see the paintings that are given here all right can you see how they have used geometric figures as triangles and little circles so it becomes easier for them to depict human life as well as animals so basically when you are talking about man depicting his life they are talking about common things that man did maybe hunting or going in search of food or you know dancing around a fire all these are things that are being depicted of human life can you see these paintings here children all right however the style of rock painting seems to be changing according to the cultural changes from stone age to the beginning of agriculture we see a lot of changes in the way man expresses himself all right in the beginning maybe he would only talk about going hunting but later on when agriculture began okay he would talk about how man had a settled life so depicting that a house maybe crops growing in front all right having a very family and settled life if you can see in those beautiful pictures given there okay and how it has changed because the change is visible in the depiction of flora and fauna or it may be evident in the style of portraying various figures and also the colors that were used in the beginning did you see how they tried to use only geometrical figures okay but now you can see a more realistic drawing of a bull or people okay not stick figures anymore black red and white colors were used in the rock paintings they would obviously use these natural colors natural way of making colors by either crushing coal or fruits or vegetables that would produce color which were made up from natural substances with the help of rock paintings we can understand the knowledge of ancient people about their natural surrounding and also the way they exploited available natural resources so it tells us how man was innovative at that time and how he used various natural substances in order to portray his feelings his emotions all right and also uh, to talk about the life that they lived all right simple lives the tradition of folk style of painting closely resembles the style of rock paintings so here also the folk style again related to the people coming together to form a particular style of painting customs such as decorating the house walls and courtyards that is rangavali by drawing various figures and symbols or using panels of paintings to narrate stories helped to develop regional style of folk paintings so if you see the pictures given here they would decorate their houses the walls all right with their various paintings these paintings again you can see children that it is depicting the human life common life of the people all right either they are dancing in a circle or maybe you can see an agricultural patch of land where there are crops growing or you would see a, a a depiction of nature okay so showing things that were very uh, relevant or 
you know close to the life of humans at that time okay now there are two boxes given to you do you know the tradition of varli painting i'm sure all of you all already know what varli painting is it's a tribal art and pingul or chitrakathi is sorry in maharashtra are among the finest examples of folk style of paintings jivya soma mashi the artist in thane district has dis- has played a great role in making the varli style of painting very popular he has been honored with a number of national and international awards for his paintings in the year 2011 he was awarded the padma shri it is interesting to know the tradition of chitra kathi now the word itself comprises of two words chitra that is picture and kathi is story so the art of telling a story us- using visual aids is mentioned in manasolas a book written by the chalukya king someshwara in the 12th century ce it confirms the antiquity of this tradition how old it is the tradition of narrating stories from ramayana or mahabharata with the help of wooden puppets and paintings is known as chitrakathi or pinguli tradition the people who still practice the art of uh, of pingul live in the village called pinguli they belong to thakar tribal community it is located in the konkan region near kudal the chitrakatha Ch- chitrakathi pictures are drawn on a paper and painted in colors made from natural substances so there is a tribe that still exists and they are keeping this tradition alive by having pictures drawn where each picture is depicting a scene of a story narration it takes 30 to 50 pictures to complete the narration of a single story these pictures are preserved very carefully and handed down from one generation to another the artists and the government are trying to preserve the tradition which is on the verge of extinction so there is a very small community that is keeping this art alive so the government is trying to make sure that the art continues to live on all right because it is a tradition it is a a, a cultural heritage that we receive from these people classical styles of painting the ancient indian texts have explained various aspects of art in great detail there are altogether 64 arts mentioned in these texts so there are books that are written and each of these books describe various kinds of arts and we have gathered together that there are 64 various arts the art of painting is mentioned as alekhyam or alekhya vidya in these it is said to have six main aspects what are these aspects is also known as shadange the ancient indian scholars studied these six aspects very minutely so they say that painting has six various aspects to it okay various parts to it the first one is roop bheda that is different shapes and forms so when you are painting you have to have various shapes and forms that need to be depicted next you have is pramana that is proportionate depiction of various features of an image if they are talking about or if they are depicting man or an animal okay so the head should be proportionate to the body and so on and so forth okay bhava that is expression to show expressions on the faces of the people that they are depicting next is lavanya yojana that is aesthetics concerned with nature and appreciation of beauty so if they are showing man maybe in a field so to depict nature in its most realistic and most beautiful manner next you have is sadrushya yata a resemblance to reality so whatever they are trying to depict in their painting it should be as close to human life as possible okay not talk about fantasy or fiction okay last we come to varnika bhang that is color composition to make sure that the colors that they use complement one another 
okay so these are the six various aspects of painting agama texts agama means traditional texts okay of various religious sects puranas and vastu shastra vastu shastra is nothing but the science of architecture they explain the art of painting and sculpting in the context of temple architecture so again we get to know more and more about the indian art the indian painting indian sculpting all right all of these that play a very important role and how it was previously written by people even in those days in those books so we come to know that india gave a lot of importance to all of these various art forms next we come to miniature paintings in manuscripts we've already spoken about this in that uh, green box all right so miniature small paintings in manuscripts manuscripts books that are written by hand the miniature paintings in the early manuscripts show an influence of persian style okay you know that india was um ruled over by the persians as well for a while so at that time they brought along their culture their painting styles and we adopted it and blended it with our own style okay creating a new style the deccan miniature style was developed under the patronage of the deccan sultanates during the reign of akbar the mughal emperor the mughal miniature style showing a blend of c indian and persian styles was developed so we get to see that there was a blend of two various styles the style that was brought from a foreign land that is the persian style as well as our own style merging together forming a new style western style of painting we know that the british were in india all right for a really long time so they bought their style of painting as well again blending it with our own in the british period indian artists came under the influence of european style of painting we were introduced to that because of the british an art school was established under the leadership of james wales a scottish artist in the time of savai madhavrao peshwe in shanivarwada in pune so we have to remember this please underline the name of that scottish artist james wales okay and he had started a school of art here in india in pune itself under the uh, in rule that time uh, of savai madhavrao peshwe he had done a portrait of savai madhavrao and nana fadnavis can you see that picture there now ganga tam gangaram tambat a marathi artist who worked with wales deserves a special mention here so we see that we have european influence of painting along with our indian artists all right who were working under uh, we see that gangaram tambat was working with james wales in the school of art and he had made drawings of the rock cut caves at verul and karle some of his drawings are preserved in the yale center of british art of yale university yale university is a very big university children that offers a lot of courses and to be part of this university is of great privilege so the fact that we have an indian artists work that is being preserved at this yale university is of great privilege great honor for us exact portrayal of the object of the painting is characteristic of the european style a number of renowned artists were trained in the jj school of art and industry which was established in 1857 this jj school of art and industry is still uh, prevalent is ex- established and it is in mumbai okay it offers courses in the european style of painting from there we have pestonji bomanji an alumni of the school made replicas of the ajanta paintings what is an alumni is nothing but an ex student of okay and he learned so much about the art of painting 
that he himself started to make replicas of the ajanta paintings and began to portray them in various exhibitions with that children we come to the end of part 1 there is a lot for you to go through a lot for you to remember names types okay so please go through the lesson once more right up till here and we'll get back with part 2 later thank you children and have a wonderful day